The next property is the differentiation in the S domain. We know from Laplace transform equation that f of s equals integration from 0 to infinity f of t exponential minus s t dt, right? So if we want to differentiate our function in the S domain, f of s, this integration is with respect to t. So if we differentiate with respect to s, we can include that differentiation inside the integration because the integration is with respect to t and we are differentiating with respect to s. So this will give us something like this, d by ds exponential minus s t dt, right? And then when we differentiate this, you are going to get exponential minus st and then minus t here so you are going to get minus c let's let's write it clearly so you are going to get f of t and then when we differentiate the exponential you are going to get the same exponential exactly and then multiply by minus t dt and this is the differentiation of f of s if you look carefully at this equation, you'll find that this equation is very similar to the Laplace transform equation. But instead of having a pair of f of t and f of s, you are having now a pair called minus t f of t and d f of s by ds, which means that these are two Laplace transform pair, which means that if you have your f of t, its Laplace transform is f of s, then df of s by ds, its Laplace transform, or its inverse Laplace transform, will be minus t f of t. What happens if you differentiate again? If you differentiate again with respect to s, you will repeat the same operation. You will find that you are differentiating with respect to s inside an integration with respect to t. So this will be minus t f of t. And then, when you differentiate this with respect to s, you are going to get the same exponential exactly, but you are going to multiply by minus t again. So it will be minus t squared dt. And again, if you look at this equation, you will find that this is the same Laplace transform equation, but the pair here, the function, the time domain is called minus t squared f of t, and its Laplace transform is d2 f of s by ds squared. So if you have have minus t square f of t is the plus transform will be b2 f of s by ds. Every time you differentiate the s domain, you are going to get minus t multiplied here in the time domain. So if you keep differentiating again and you can try it by yourself, you are going to get another minus t multiplied. So it will be minus t to the power 3 f of t. In general, if you differentiate n times, you are going to get minus t to the power n f of t in the time domain. So differentiating in the s domain is equivalent to multiplying minus t in the time domain. Let's solve a couple of examples of this and verify this property. So the first example is we know that the unit step it has a Laplace transform of 1 over s, right? Let's differentiate. Let's differentiate in the s domain. If we differentiate in the s domain, this will be minus 1 over s squared, right? And this is equivalent to multiplying minus t u of t. We can cancel the negative with the negative. This will give us what? This will give us the rank function that the RAM function, it has a Laplace transform of 1 over s squared. And this is correct. This is what we solved before in the previous videos. We found using the integration property, using many other properties, uh, we found that the RAM function, it has a Laplace transform of 1 over s squared, right? We can do it again. If we differentiate again, if we differentiate again, you are going to get s cubed in the denominator, and up you are going to get minus Two, right? And here, if you differentiate again, according to this property, you must multiply by minus t. So it will be minus t squared u of t, right? And again, the negative will cancel with the negative. Then you are going to get that t squared. It has a Laplace transform of 2 over s cubed. And this is consistent 
with the example that we solved in the last video using the integration property, right? We solved the same example in the last video using the integration property and we found that t squared u of t it has a plus transform of 2 over s cubed. Let's keep going if we differentiate again s cubed will be s to the power 4 and here we will get 2 multiplied by 3 2 multiplied by 3 okay and here you are going to with a negative sign of course okay, here you are going to get negative t cubed u of t Again, the negative will cancel with the negative. Every time the negative, there will be a negative sign here and the negative sign here, so they will cancel with each other. If you keep going, you will find that t to the power n u of t, it will be 2 multiplied by 3, multiplied by 4, multiplied by n, multiplied by n over s to the power n plus 1, which is exactly the same that we calculated from the integration property in the previous video which will be factorial n over s to the power n plus 1 so here we show that when we solve this example the Laplace transform of t, t squared, t cubed to t to the power n using the differentiation in the s domain property it gave us the same result exactly that we obtained from the integration property Let's solve another example. We know that uh, exponential minus 18, it has a plus transform of 1 over s plus a. If we differentiate in that s domain, this will give us negative 1 over s plus a squared. And in the time domain, we are going to multiply by negative t. So it's going to give us negative t exponential minus 18. And negative will cancel with the negative. So from here we obtained we obtained the Laplace transform of t exponential minus 80. And if you look at the tables, the Laplace transform tables, you will find that this is correct. We can get t squared exponential minus 80 and t cubed exponential minus 80 by every time we multiply here by negative t, we differentiate in the uh, other side. Okay? So if we differentiate again or we can start from the opposite if you want t squared exponential minus 18 then you have to differentiate and multiply by negative so if you want to multiply by t only not negative t if you want to multiply by t here then you differentiate and you multiply by negative so it will be negative d by ds of this amount if you do it you will find that you will get 2 over s plus a q then if you keep going, t to the power n exponential minus 80, you will find that it will give you factorial n factorial n over s plus a to the power n plus 1. Okay, and again if you look at the tables, you will find that this is the uh, correct uh, Laplace transform and here we use uh, the, uh, the differentiation this domain to obtain these Laplace transform. So anytime you want to multiply by t in the time domain, you, you have a function and you want to multiply by t in the time domain, then differentiate in the s domain and multiply by a negative sign. You differentiate and you multiply by a negative sign if you want to multiply by t in the time domain. Okay, we can uh, take an extra example. One more example. The sign. So if we want to obtain example, find the Laplace transform of t multiplied by sine bt, sine constant multiplied by t. So we know that sine bt has a Laplace transform of b over s squared plus b squared. So if you want to multiply the sine by t in the time domain as we agreed, t is sine. Dt, all what you need to do is you differentiate in the s domain and you multiply by negative sign. You differentiate with respect to s this amount and you multiply by negative sign. Differentiating this amount in the s domain gives you s squared plus b squared to the power 2 in the denominator and in the numerator it's going to give you 2ds negative 2ds 
So negative will cancel with the negative. So what you are going to get, you are going to get 2BS over S squared plus B squared all squared. This is the Laplace transform of T sine dt. As an exercise for you, you can try to do at home, you can try to do the Laplace transform of T cosine dt, and you will find the final answer in the tables of Laplace transform in the textbook. The next property, we are going just to mention the next property, we will mention it without solving an exa uh, any examples. Examples of the next property will appear later when we talk about systems. The next property is the convolution property. The convolution property, property number seven, it says that the convolution between, between any two functions in the time domain, it will have uh, the plus transform of the multiplication between the, the plus transform of the first function and the plus transform of the second function. And be careful here because the convolution here in the time domain it's supposed to be from minus infinity to infinity f1 of tau f2 of t minus tau d tau, right? But implicitly f1 of, t of t and f2 of t each of these two functions it exists only starting from zero and yeah, implicitly it is multiplied by one step inside right so implicitly each one it has a unit step inside so to be correct f1 of tau must be multiplied by u of tau and f2 of t minus tau it should be multiplied by u of t minus tau d tau Multiplying by u of tau here for the first function and u of t minus tau for the second function, it can uh, change the uh, limits of integration a little bit because multiplying by u of tau makes the integration goes from zero. So we can remove u of tau from here and let the integration starts from zero. And multiplying by u of t minus tau, be careful that our variable is tau here. So this unit step of t minus tau it exists from minus infinity up to t. So multiplying by u of t minus tau, it's like multiplying by 1 only up to t. So the convolution is defined in the time domain now as integration from 0 to t, f1 of tau, f2 of t minus tau, d tau. And its Laplace transform will be f1 of s multiplied by f2 of s. This property will be important to us, especially when we deal with LTI systems. And when we deal with LTI systems, we know that the relation between the input and the input's response and the output is y of t equals x of t convolution with h of t. This means that in the S domain, this relation will convert into, uh, uh, into uh, a multiplication between x of s and h of s, where h of s is the uh, uh, s domain response is the transfer function is the transfer function of our system which also can be written as y of s over x of s so this is called the transfer function of our system and uh, we are going to use this a lot when we talk about the applications of Laplace transform uh, in the future videos, when we talk about applications of the plus transform to calculate the output of a system or to calculate the uh, transfer function of a system, we are going to use this convolution property uh, many times. Okay, that's it for this video, and we'll see you in the next video with other properties.